Good morning. Welcome to First Christian Church of St. Paul. We are located in Matamidai, Minnesota. Good morning and Happy New Year. And I should also add Merry Christmas. I'd like to welcome you to First Christian Church of St. Paul, located in Matamidai, Minnesota. My name is Dennis Sanders and I am the pastor. We here at First Christian St. Paul want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on your spiritual journey, we, are wel we welcome you to join us as we worship together. If you'd like to know more about our congregation or the denomination that we belong to, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, you can go to our website at fccstpaul.org. A new year is all about new beginnings. And on this first Sunday in 2021, we are going to look at the first chapter of the Gospel of John, the beginning of the Gospel of John. The writer tells a fascinating story of God from the beginning of time to the arrival of God in the form of Jesus Christ. Why does this all matter? Let's find out together. This is the second Sunday in the season of Christmas. Let us continue with our worship. Good morning, church. How are you? Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. This morning, we are coming to you with O oh, Come All Ye Faithful. We know it's very uh, older traditional song um, in our community and uh, we want to lift this up this morning and um, any prayers that you have for beloveds and celebrate the new year. I'm Michelle Crowder, this is Michael May and we are delighted to be with you here again this morning. Thank you for having us. And we are singing the first, second, and fourth verse. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of Sing in exultation, oh, come ye, all citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest, oh, come, let us adore him, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. E Lord, we greet thee, born of salvation. Adore him. Oh, come, let us 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 adore him
We continue our worship now with our opening prayer. Please join me. Oh God, at the beginning of this new year, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us now who know you not by sight, but by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to the time when we confess our sins to God. We will begin with a, a moment or two of silence, and then we will come, come again and pray the, pray the prayer of confession and forgiveness. So please join me in this time of silence. And now, hear this prayer. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Now let us attend to God's wisdom for us today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This ends this reading of this holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, peace be upon you. Please pray with me. 
O oh good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for this opportunity to explore your life-giving word. O oh God, I humbly heart ask, in hearts of hearts, in minds of minds, that the words I speak reflect that light that comes from the sun, that I might reflect that in the darkness that is all around us, that we all might abide in God's love, life, and light. Oh, I humbly ask that the words I speak and the meditations of our hearts and minds might be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once again in this holiday season, in this Christmas time, we come to hear those words from John, which began the gospel. This lesson is probably the most poetic of theology we have in Scripture. For me, reading the words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the light of all the people was the light of all the people. For me to read that text speaks to the call I feel we all have. It speaks to what I understand is the radical dogma of my faith, that Christ embodying a life-giving logic of God from this lesson, I come away aware of a radical dogma of my faith, which when that we find in God, through Christ, what God, how God thinks and how God wants us to think. In this lesson, we hear the word, the word, repeated over and over and over. It speaks to a concept beyond just words on the page. As you all know, the word here is logos, which is the form of the word where we get the word logic. In John, I hear that word come again and again and again. This, the gospel, is how God reasons. The way God wants us to reason with one another and with God. The other word that it holds prominence in this text is life. I understand life is the ability to grow and reproduce that growth. So when we see this, then we see that Jesus Christ is the embodiment of God's reasoning on how we need to grow and reproduce that growth. Out of this dogma, this foundational belief we see that the faith of God in, intends us to grow and reproduce that growth of faith in a community of faith. We see our religious faith or our Christian faith isn't merely conserving some memories of a past, but it is expected expected to be 
experienced here and now, we encounter God in this moment. You know, in affirming the, this dogma, we open ourselves to a faith that has an impact on our lives. The living word offers a different way of viewing faith, which is not the conservation of a cultural past, but in the encountering of God, living presence here and now. The belief that Jesus Christ offers us not just a faith that makes us great again, per se, but makes us better than what we were before. And in this profound insight, we see who we are and whose we are. It is not about returning to some perfect being of the past. Moreover, it is about encountering God here and now. God wants a living relationship with us to help us grow in our faith. The other thing that's so important in this text comes toward the end of the lesson, verses 7 and on. We have this concept of John, who is there to proclaim God's will, who has come to testify. In that, we see that we realize that our faith is not just some spiritual belief that we hold within our hearts, our hearts, or ponder every so often, but it is something to be lived out of, that it should be a growth out of our experiences, out of the insights and practice that we do. Therefore, it isn't just simply something of mere personal preference or mere personal prejudice, but it is foundationally engaging the world so that both we and the world might be in a better place. And in that way, then, it requires our faith to be lived in community with one another supporting one another as we grow into the faith that we ought to have. As we grow into God would want us to be, we find ourselves in a new year, after a past year, when I think all have gone through the valley of the shadow of death. I think there is a hope that relies in the affirmation of this dogma that yes, yesterday, last year was terrible, today is bearable, but tomorrow will be better still. In the past season, we have struggled to see where can we live into what God would have us be have an abundant life. That requires us to ask how we need to grow in our faith and have opportunities to ask of that growth. In this moment, we have the opportunity to ask, where have we encountered God? How has our faith grown from that encounter and how do we live out of that encounter into the community that we exist in? You know, it is at the core of our foundational belief. That's where the church thrives. That's where we can fully become what God wants us to be in community when we can share those stories. And so it is my earnest hope that you might, in the comment section in this video, 
share where you have encountered God. How has that affected your faith and helped your faith grow? And how can you live into that faith with the community's help? It is my belief if we can talk about these things, we can find a support group to help us within the community to help grow and reproduce that faith in Jesus Christ. So then, we are challenged once more in this hour of trial. We need to have a faith support us, but we also need a community to help us in that belief. Those relationships we have here can strengthen us to grow into that community and help us move into an uncertain future with a sense of hope. That is my hope for you today and for every day. After this horrible year, after this annus horribilis, we are facing a challenging world. We need to explore how we can live into what God has called us to be. And to do so is to understand this lesson from John's first chapter, that God, through Christ, in the gospel, helps us to grow and reproduce that growth and helps us move forward. May it be so for us, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. And now, may we as the people of God 
come before God to share our concerns. Let us join in prayer. Dear Lord, we begin a new year and look back over an incredibly difficult 2020. We have seen hundreds of thousands of people dying to a virus that a year ago we did not really even knew existed. We see millions left without jobs. We see racial strife. We see contested elections and cities on fire. All of this has left us weary and fretful for the future. Yet we are reminded that from the beginning of time, you have cared for all of your creation, including your people. The coming of your son is a reminder that we are not left alone. In a time when darkness seems to be so ever-present, we give thanks for your son who brings light to the world. We come to you today with our concerns and our fears that we lift up to you. We pray for those dealing with illness, including Ben and Angie, acquaintances of Jan Paulson, for Kathy Pino and her parents. We pray for local disciple congregations that are in the midst of looking for new pastoral leadership including Lake Harriet Christian Church in Minneapolis and Plymouth Creek Christian Church in Plymouth. And we pray for our sister congregations in the wider region of the Christian Church in the Upper Midwest, for Bloomfield Christian Church in Bloomfield, Iowa, for First Church United in West Liberty, Iowa, and for Cedar Memorial Christian Church in Davenport, Iowa. May all of these congregations be your hands and your feet in the communities where they are located. We ask that you hear our requests this morning. Help us to receive each new day as a gift and not as a burden. Help us to see every day as an opportunity to be seized. Give us courage when we would find it easier to cower. Give us mountains to climb when we would rather dwell in valleys. Forbid that the difficult for difficulty of living well and doing your will should ever foster in us despair. Instead, give us power, even in our weakness, to overcome. We bring before you all of the needs of the communities, both those that we have shared here publicly this morning and those within our hearts. And we pray for our congregation, for First Christian Church of St. Paul, that we might be your servants in the community so that your name will be made known. We ask all these things in the name of the one who is our friend and our savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, fa our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ. May God's love be with you. May God the parents' grace allow you to love yourself without hesitation. May Christ's compassion for you allow you to love others without restraint. And may the Holy Spirit's life-giving presence be with you and those you love and those who know and loves now and forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Our next hymn is Lo, I Am With You on page 430 of your hymnal. And this was written by John Bell. And he was a part of the Iona community in Scotland. And that is an ecumenical community of uh, Christian dwellers. And it originally started in Scotland and has since made its way all around the world through its music and membership. This particular piece is based off of Matthew 28, verse 20. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world, or some translations, the end of the age. Interesting. And this piece can be used for the Lord's Supper. It can also be used with the alternative or the extended lyric. And we will actually be singing verses 1, 4, 6, and 7. As you can see with the current state of our community and of the world, these lyrics will be very timely. So I hope that you find peace in them and solidarity. Um, and that you feel seen and heard. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you. Lo, I am with you. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you in the struggle for peace. Lo, I am with you in the struggle for peace. Lo, I am with you. Lo, Thank you. 